Okay, everyone. Hope everyone is having a lovely day on this, uh, uh, on this, uh, I don't know. I think it's Friday. I think today is Friday. Let's say today is Friday because I, I'm going to read my mind and say it's Friday. So, uh, hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, I did not check the audio. Let's just say the audio is good. I'm going to pretend the audio is good because otherwise you'd be I would hope you guys would be telling me how horrible the audio is. Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you're just like that. So, Anyways, it is hot today. It is hot, 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 hot. Like, let's look at the temperature. We'll talk about how crazy the temperature is. Current temperature is 60 degrees, or oh, that is uh, 16, 16C. So um, don't get me wrong. It's kind of cool to have warm days. A couple warm days here in the winter. Uh, it's it's very nice because that means that I can actually work on some projects, which we have been working on some projects outside. We will talk some more about those projects that we're working on. Peek up and see the variety of clouds. We got some nice big fluffy clouds. We have some crazy clouds, and then we've got like right here, guys. Look at that chemtrail just ripping through the center of the clouds, just breaking it up. Saying nope. There's another chemtrail right over there by the uh, cell towers, just whipping through, breaking up the clouds. So today we're going to talk a little bit about technology and why you shouldn't be afraid of it. Why actually, my advice is you should be embracing it. You should be learning how to use it to the best of your ability. And why? We should not be afraid of it. So you're going to hear a lot of, especially if you're in my circles, you're in the truther circles, you're in the conspiracy circles, you're in all these circles. You're going to hear a lot of folks talk about how it's the beast machine trying to push us towards this, that, or the other. And while that is true, all those things are happening. It also doesn't mean that it's not going to make our lives better and more luxurious if we take back control over it and we start manipulating it in the way to make our lives and our friends' lives and everybody around on. Okay. Sometimes DLive can be rather silly. It just cuts off and comes back. So hopefully uh, I'm back. And you guys can hear me. What was I saying? Oh, we were getting water for Lisa. Um, so let's begin with what I'm talking about with technology. Why technology is good. Um, why we, you and me, should be learning all of the technology to the best of our ability. And why it's good to not be a Luddite. Now, there's a huge difference between accepting something that you disagree with. So I do not have my real ID. Um, I've not ever participated in that. So my, my driver's license does not have a gold star. That is completely different than saying I'm never going to use ChatGPT because using a piece of software that is going to make your life better, more luxurious, is be the equivalent of saying, I'm going to get on the internet, but I'm not going to use a search engine because search engines make me lazy. Um, can you imagine, just think about that. Can you imagine telling someone that or thinking about that? Coming out with the concept of that a search engine makes you lazy. Oh, if you don't know the URL, you actually shouldn't be able to look something up. That's pretty much the equivalent of what you're saying when you're saying, I'm never going to use a GPT. Now, if you want to say, I'm never going to pay for a GPT, that's fine. I'm okay with that. There's lots of stuff you can say, but um, knowing the technology... The next thing is, is you have to stop believing in the hype. Um, there is a fear equals a lot of money. The more afraid, the more afraid they make you, the more money they make. 
I, I, I've talked about this with all of my friends on here. If I would preach fear and just scare you guys and tell you how horrible everything is, I would be attracting a lot more people because fear sells. Because we're naturally, our, our instinctually, we hear something scary. We hear something that's fear and we, we have a just this this reaction this internal reaction in our body to want to keep listening to want to protect ourselves to want to do things when in reality it's most of the fear we have today is manufactured bullshit uh one of the things i find very intriguing with my friends and i'm just going to pick on my friends here for a few minutes is a lot of my friends will say oh but you know, we can't use this piece of technology because, you know, oh, we know the bad people are using it and the bad people are doing this. But we also know the bad people are lying to us. So with the bad people lying to us and the bad people tricking us with the technology, saying that, oh, if you use ChatGPT, it's going to be sentient and it's going to lead towards, you know, Skynet. The truth be told is, if you know how to use that device, if you know how to talk to that things, if you know how to program, if you know how to build your own language model, and a good example is, look over at Gab AI. What um, Andrew is doing over at Gab AI is amazing. He's taking all the Lon's language models and he's tailoring it. He's showing us the weakness of it. He's showing us the strength and the weakness of it. He's showing us that he can tailor it towards being building a Christian AI. Well, if you can build a Christian AI, then, then that means that it's not sentient. It means that it's never going to take control. It means that the inputs that you put in, or the words that you type, the words that you program it, if you are a good person and you are putting good things in, then good things are going to come out. Now, if you're using bad things and you're putting bad things in, then bad things will come out. That is a true statement. And that's good to understand. But you just throwing your hands in the air and saying, no, I'm not going to participate in any of this. It's the equivalent of saying, I know you're really sick and bad things are happening to you, but I will pray for you. And then never offer them person any other help than just some words on Facebook. Because... I mean, while words can be useful, you know, hey, it's good to comfort a friend when they need it. It's good to be there. But just typing words doesn't actually solve anything. So saying that I'm never going to use this thing because it is scary, Doc. It is scary. And I think the bad people are using it to manipulate me. The bad people are using it to manipulate you. And the bad people are going to continue to use it to manipulate you. And the less you know about it, the more they're going to manipulate you. And exactly what Mark just said, that's the other thing that we need to start thinking about. Learning about AI means more opportunities for you. Let's say, let's say that you are, let's pick on one of our friends. Let's say that you are an architect. And you just can't find quality workers to help draw you the plans or to help do the math or help find the code. You could utilize that AI or you could utilize an individual that knows how to talk to that AI or how to use that AI to put in a baseline. So again, you're still hiring people. You're just hiring someone doing something different than you initially thought. And then that particular person is going to make your business, your life way easier. Because instead of you having to spend hours searching through local code, you can have that individual put that local code into the algorithm, into the system. Let's just, let's just call it a system. You can have them put that, that entire code book into the system. Then they know the proper words. They're a good wordsmith. You know, a prompt engineer is what they call it. And that prompt engineer can pull out the exact code from that exact town inside that. It's really not that much different from when you do a keyword search. 
um, on Word. So, you know, you can get up on the top of Word, you can type in your pretty little words, and you can ask it saying, hey, show me every place it says the word code. This, uh, using properly using a GPT, and this is any of them, I'm not just picking on OpenAI, any of them, properly using a GPT will help you make your life easier. And somebody being a prompt engineer can be better at it. So again, this is going to create more jobs. This is going to create more jobs for those that are also kind of lazy. That's what's cool about this. Like we talk about, oh, people are getting lazy and they don't know how to do things. And what are we going to do when people get so lazy? When you can be so lazy to type in words, and, and when you, <coughs> and when you can get to the point where you might not be, you know, you're not a code monkey or anything. And what Mark just said there, you can talk to your computer, computer, I need help with this. And you knowing the right words to say, the computer does, it can't read your mind. You have to be good at using your words, but you use the right words and you say the right words to this program, it will find what you want to find for you. And just look at this, you know, this is probably a better way to look at it. Um, another possible way is look at this more like search engines 2 or 3.0. We just upgraded, we just upped the ante on how, how good search engines work. Now, there's some stuff we got to be concerned of. Absolutely. Let's, let's not, let's not, uh, Let's not, let's not uh, kid ourselves. We do need to make sure that the ones we're using, we trust the people that are programming it. And if we don't, we make sure we use the ones that are being programmed properly because we don't want them to, you know, tailor in the woke shit, which they might try. So, you know, you do need to, that's why I tell people have the best understanding of the technology that you can. But that being said, you know, you understand how that it's working and you understand how to put in the right prompts and you understand if it's if it's giving you an answer that you're not too comfortable with and that's just that's through knowledge base of actually playing with the tool and knowing how to use your tool then you know if it's uh giving you answers that you might not necessarily think are appropriate but again when it comes to that the tv's gonna the tv's been lying to us most of the most of our life you know you can go onto wikipedia and you can see how articles that used to tell the truth are being you know, controlled. So everything, every aspect of your life is being controlled to a certain extent. So just because this new piece of technology is also being controlled, it doesn't mean you should disregard it either. It means that you should need to use that tool. You need to utilize it and you need to be more proficient at it. You need to be better at the tool than the bad guys. Think about that for a second. Better at the tool than the bad guys. Because the bad guys are going after the masses. They're not going after you. They're going after the masses. Because they don't have the bandwidth. They don't have the time. There's not enough of them. There's not enough bad guys out there to go after every into one, every individual one of us. Good always wins. Late always beats darkness. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what faith you have been born with or what you've converted to. That is the fundamental truth. Just want that to sink in for a minute. So. How, do, how is it made? So now, now, now you're going to say, okay, doc, you're telling me all this. How has it made your life better? So I suck at writing. Like my grammar skills are horrid. Absolute horrid. Like. Thank God for things like Grammarly or thanks God for early things like spell check. I don't know what I would have done in the days when I was running my, when I ran the BNB, if I didn't have spell check, if I didn't have a couple friends that I threw over to proofread things. Well, now if my friend's busy and they can't proofread something, I can just throw up something on chat GPT. I can tell chat GPT to not change a single word. Just say, make sure the grammar's correct. Make sure the spelling's correct. Make sure this makes sense. Zip it into that. And it tells me, yes, what you said sounds really good. And maybe it'll make a suggestion, but I don't have to follow it. That's the other thing, guys. You don't, just because the tool tells you something, you don't have to listen to it. You can just see what the tool says and go from there.
So how's it? It's made my life easier that way. Sometimes I don't know what I want to talk about. Like, I'm just like, man, with my ADHD, I want to talk about this and I want to talk about this and I want to talk about that over there and I want to talk about that cloud and I want to talk about that tree. And what this program can do is it can help me say, okay, today we're going to talk about this, tomorrow we're going to talk about this, and these are how the important things. I can also get on the internet and say, what do you guys want to actually know about this tree? And it can say, well, trending right now is people want to know more about this. And so I can, I can get my message out to more people. I can get my message. I can get the message that I think is important to the people that need to hear it because I don't know how to do the trending searches, but it does an okay job at the trending searches. It doesn't even have to be great at it. It just has to be better than me. And I can use it. Then next thing is like, okay, I've got 50 plants and I need to know all the pH of all 50 plants. I can upload a file to them and say, okay, through all the plants that's on the list, I need to know what the soil pH is of all the plants. And then based on the soil pH, can you group them together so that I know which guys I can grow together and which guys I can't? And it'll absolutely do that to me as for me as well. And so as an assistant, and that's how we should be using technology. We should be using any type of technology. I don't care if it's a shovel or if it's a computer algorithm. We should be using it to assist, not control, assist our lives. Here's some more water, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, are you making the babies yet? What? Are you making the babies yet? No. Why do you? I don't know who would move into that cage. Let's uh, talk oh, about. I do. Let's talk about. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. So, who are we moving? If we move the babies. Who are we moving into the cage? Two boys and a girl down. Okay. One boy, three girls up here. Okay. Three girls and two boys. One girl with this boy in the back cage. If you want to do that, go ahead. If you want to do that, switch up. That makes sense. I just don't want the babies on the ground. I know. Okay. That's what I was yeah. That's what I was. Um, it's a five, five, four. So if you want to do that switch up, go ahead. Because soon in the in the next couple, no, it's fine. In the next, ultimately, Lisa, just so you know, ultimately, I think this is going to become a quail cage because I think we're going to order quail this year. Okay. Um, because I want to do a class on, and you guys can hear this too. I want to do a class on quail. I want to do a class on quail and the importance of because you know we did really well when we had those couple guys that we rescued. So I think it'd be fun to get some more and to uh, raise some more quail. Okay. So. We could do that as well, yeah, later on. So, okay. Um, I'm going to go feed the rabbits and such out that way, so let's get that done. Okay. So, sorry, it's a change of thought, but this is how my life is. Sometimes we can be in deep and wonderful conversation, and then priority of the barn wins. And we have to just do that first because that is just what is most important. And thank you, Mark, for the lemons and the ice cream. Absolutely appreciate that. So we're going to collect some uh, <clears throat> while we're here in the barn in the handy run. We're going to uh, get some rabbit food. And we're going to go get the guys outside fed. So I don't know if you guys heard, we're going to actually add quail to the mix very soon. I've been wanting to add quail for a while. So um, I'm going to teach a class. I'm going to teach some classes because I, I have a lot of friends that can't get out of the city, but they want to have fresh eggs and quail is the absolute very best solution for that. So um, quail is something I actually raised a lot. Um, I've raised quail a lot in my life. So when I lived in the uh, suburbs and then when my buddy lived in the city, we, we actually wrote, we actually started my first farm business is uh, when I was living in the suburbs and I had chickens and quail and we ran a business called Broken Spoke Farm. Me and my buddy, he lived in the inner city. I lived in the suburbs and in both locations, we were raising quail just because we were showing how actually it's an easy, it's an easy peasy. You don't need a lot of room. You can raise them in apartments. So um, I'm just going to get back to talking more about that. Waldo, thank you for the lemon. So, but anyways, back to technology. 
That's the other cool thing. Let's let's talk about technology and raising quail for a second. The cool other cool thing about raising quail and having technology, you can throw a webcam on them and then you always be able to watch your quail. You'll be able to see what they're doing. There's um automatic feeders now. It makes raising everything, excuse me, a whole lot easier. I forgot to grab a water container. I can't get these guys water. So let's go back and get some water. So there is tons of awesome technology. If it wasn't for technology, I wouldn't be able to talk to you right now. I suggest every one of my friends should be some type of streaming. You should be giving, you should be spending, you're good at something. Every one of you right here that's watching right now is good at something. Every one of you should be spreading that thing that you're good, you're good at. You should be telling other people how they can learn from you because maybe there won't be tens of thousands of people that will learn that skill that you have. But you only really need one person to learn a skill from you. They're just like, man, that dude, he really teaches, he really like got me the way we talked and he can teach me how to do that particular thing. And so by you helping that one other person, you don't know, you might be able to make it so that they can get out of the B system. You might be able to help them that they might be able to teach their kids something. So... You know, even if you want to do a faceless and you just want to have your hands in the screen or you just want to move around and, and show because you're good at cutting and editing videos. But every one of us, um, I think every one of us has skills that we should be sharing. And if you are like lurking and your tech is too old to stream, then maybe you find a way to teach locally. Because I think that's one of the things that we, we, we relied so much in past on universities or our public education. And we forgot that as a people, we used to actually learn from our elders, from our friends, from our uncles, from our grandparents. We used to learn from our community. And we then... I don't, I don't, I don't want to say we got lazy. I just, we, we thought it would be a better idea to let somebody else teach those things. When in reality, most of the time people want to learn from people that they're friends with, people that they know, people that they can relate with. You learn better. You can, you feel more comfortable asking the questions. You just relate better when you're learning from folks that you know. And so that's something we should be utilizing this gift of technology that we have today into getting our message out to as many people as possible. You know, if you're not a streamer, you know, I actually can't think of any reason why you shouldn't be using, why you shouldn't be having a blog or a website or a YouTube video or a live stream. I actually can't think of any reason today um, that you having... You doing all of that should be like, that's, that's, that's like the new resume. I mean, I can tell you right now, um, something I'm going to pay attention to when I get interns in the future is I'm going to see if my interns, when I, when I interview interns and such, I'm like, okay, what's your social media presence? Like, what have you, how have you helped the world around you? What have you done to try to make the world better? Because I think that's it, because... Like that is something, that is a skill I think is, maybe a skill is the wrong word. That is a trait I want to see in people that I surround myself with. I want to see how, what you, what you do to try to make the world better. How, how are you actively trying to improve the quality of your friends, your loved ones, your friends' lives? Because it might just be as simple as, you know what, I write a, I write a short little blog it could be something as that, or it could be a YouTube video. It could just be, you know what, I got a Discord. No, it's not falling anything in line like a social credit score. It's falling, it's falling in line like a I want to make the world better by making sure all of my friends have someone that they can trust to and talk to that's not the man trying to tell them, oh, you need to eat this food, you need to do this 
and you need to do this. I want it. It's not, it's not this social credit score. It's this, it's this cohesion of a tribe. It's this it's cohesion of my friends and me and you and all that kind of stuff. We're working together to make sure that all of us have the knowledge. And some kid over, let's just say some kid over in Africa, he's got YouTube and he's like, my family is insane. They're killing each other. They're killing elephants, that kind of stuff. But all I want to do is all I want to do is take this little piece of land that I have and I want to grow. But there's no one in my community that can teach me how to do that. But Doc and some folks there in America can give me hope and can give me tips on how to make this better. That's how I view it. That's the problem is that they want us to think that us giving our information and using this technology is part of the social credit score. And they scare us with shows like Black Mirror. And they scare us with shows all the time. They, they do this predictive programming bullshit that is trying to scare us into getting our knowledge out there. Is They think like, oh, well, you know what? Um, if you get on the internet and you tell people who you are, and you get on this kind of stuff, well, then someone's going to dox you, and then bad people are going to come to your house, and bad things are going to happen. But the truth is, that's not going to happen. The truth is, is that you, if you are a good person, and you are trying to get good knowledge out there, I don't care if you're a Christian, I don't care if you're a Jew, a Muslim, an atheist, good energy will come to you if you are trying to do good things. Evil doesn't work in that way. Evil, evil attacks good, but it doesn't always win. And again, I'm not telling anybody, don't go out. And you, if you're not comfortable, there's lots of reasons why you don't want people to know who you are. I'm not telling you that you should or shouldn't do that. That is a personal decision, and that is based off of what you want to do with your life. But I'm saying that if you're, if you're, if you are simply afraid, if the internet, if the bad people have got you to the point where you're afraid of technology and you're afraid of getting your message out there and you're afraid of doing the right thing, and someone wants to do that, then it's called evil. And if you take the word evil, E V I L, and you spin it around, it's the opposite of live. Evil is anything that happens that stops you from living the life the way you know it should be lived. There's a difference between the way you want it to live and the way you know it should be lived. You should be the best person you should possibly be. You should be building yourself, making yourself as strong and powerful as possible. You should be making your community, your family, focus on your family, make your family as strong and as resilient as possible. Then you move on to your friends and make your friends as strong and as resilient as possible. Then you move on to your community and you make your community as strong and resilient as possible. And if you can keep moving up the aisle, if you are blessed with the ability to keep moving up, then it's your responsibility to keep moving up. And it's okay. If you've gotten family members that you're just like, man, Uncle Joe, he's a lot of work. Then don't move up. Focus on Uncle Joe. Focus on strengthening your family. And just like Mark said there, the, the, the quality, the technology just makes it better. It also means that we can just shut up. We can just close down the elite. When the elite come in and say, oh, you need to watch CNN. I mean, just remember, the TV told us not that long ago not that long ago, the TV was telling us things like, oh, well, you can't read these files. Only we can. And they were just tricking people because the elite are using the technology because they want us to think that we shouldn't use it. So got a little passionate there because, um, yeah, I just, uh, the excuse sometimes bothers me. And I know none of you guys are making that excuse. It's just, I, you know, future people may watch this and it's important for future people to know that I've got a firm stance on things. There's my hook. You guys got me frustrated. I left the hook, my hook, all the way over here. Where's that van? 
all the way over here, but we're good. So, oh, here, let's, you guys want to see the bunnies. I got all passionate for you for a second, but so let's, let's calm this down a bit and let's bunnies. Let's go say hi to all the cute bunnies as they're eating and say, hey, bunnies, right? So we've got Stewie, our oldest bunny, Charlie, um, our first generation bunny, and Homer, just our big guy. He's a big, he's a nice, big, fluffy bunny. So. <laughs> the wonderful bunnies that live in the bunny world. I'll let you guys watch the bunnies as I get everybody else fed, because, you know, it's probably a little bit more exciting to watch bunnies than to watch me passionately prance around prance around whatever word i'm trying to use there it is a carabiner yes that is a true statement the hooky thing <laughs> okay so let's see where do who have i got fed i haven't got cindy in them fed yet let's give cindy some food there you go cindy and some food. exactly the ways that you can you know, because most people are good people, we, we tend to sometimes think that if we use something or that if we utilize, if we save some money or we utilize something, that that makes us a bad person. And it only makes us a bad person is if the thing that we are doing is hurting other people. If you are doing something into the best of your ability and you are doing it to try to make the world better then you're not actually hurting anyone. I mean, just like I, I hear people talk about, oh, well, you know, I can't be on YouTube because YouTube censoring everyone and YouTube is blah, 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 and YouTube is bad and blah, blah, blah. And I like to point out the simple fact is, is if you can, if, if on YouTube, if you can reach a couple more people on YouTube, it's why I stream on YouTube. If you can reach a few people on YouTube so that you can get them over to your other platform so you can get them to hear your real message, sometimes you have to play within the parameters of the rules to be able to get people to realize that you don't have to actually participate in the rules. So maybe you do a short little stream on YouTube to get people over or you do a thing like this because I don't really care that much. You get some people over um, with your message and then you're just like, hey, come join the Discord. Come... Join my, read my newsletter, come do this, come learn how it really can be. And then you've got somebody that maybe never heard about Discord, maybe never heard about DLive, maybe never even dreamed that someone would post this kind of stuff on a Twitch. Take advantage. You, you don't let them use the beast system. You play within their rules. One of the things that I think we especially as truthers or as folks that actually are movers and shakers, folks that are outlaws. Um, I consider myself an absolute outlaw. I don't like rules. But one of the things that, we, that I notice with folks that try to call themselves these things is they bitch and whine about, well, this piece of technology won't let me do that. Well, you know what? As a smart human being, you should be trying to figure out ways to get around that. If you're being censored, if you're being controlled, and control them back, man. Get the message. Being able to learn to talk in the circles. Um, no, I'm good. Everybody over here is fed. Um, you need to be able to learn to. So you get, you say enough, like a great example. You say enough on YouTube to get them over to your Rumble channel or get them over to your DLive channel or get them over to your blog or you get them over something like that. You get them over to your DLive where you can talk about, where you can, you know, explain to them and talk to them about the real message that you have to have. You know, it's like... I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked at uh, having to people that are in cults and having to uh, deprogram someone that's been in a cult. Like the best way to do that is to know how the cult functions, to be inside of that so you can deprogram from inside out. Yes. You know, I don't like... I really don't like that I know that I'm streaming on YouTube right now and there's certain things that I just can't say. I don't like that. 
But I also know that if you guys really want to hear my message, you guys will jump over and watch some, one of my streams that are just solely on DLive. Or you guys might jump over and you guys might follow my, my blog on, sub, on, um, on Substacks. Or sometimes, you know, sometimes I talk to a lot of normies. And normies don't know. A lot of normies don't know that they're asleep. They've just never, they've never had the ability, they've never had a reason to attempt to wake up. I mean, with the, uh, you know, the great snow day, the four years of the great snow day where, you know, they told us where they, you know, they installed a bioweapon and tried to do bad things to us. That did open some people's eyes. I don't necessarily say it woke them up, but it, it opened, but it opened up, it opened up a lot of eyes. And that just means that there's more people and I need to, I need to say the right message. I need to use the technology, this, this, this wonderful technology, this phone that I have right now, these glasses that I have, this microphone, this, this message that I have. Yes, exactly. What Lurking just said there is it's our responsibility to be able to get better at learning the tricks to surpass the algorithms, how to get this message out to as many people as possible. Every once in a while it happens. Every once in a while good people learn how to get that message out and they can reach millions and they can change things and they can do wonderful, wonderful things in the world. Um, but that's, you know, we, we think that being good is supposed to be easy. And I don't know why we ever, why we ever believe that lie. Um, being manipulating and tricking and bad and using people, that's kind of the easy part. You know, caring about another human. It's a lot easy to not care about a human being. You know, you see someone's car on fire over there. You know, if you see a car on fire over there, some people just ignore it. Um, but, you know, if you, if you see a car on there and you pull that person out, of the, of the burning fire. Yeah. You're risking your life, but you've also, you also know that you saved a life and, and maybe that life that you just saved, um, is going to do great things. You know, I, I like to, I like to, I like this analogy. People talk about if they go back in time, they'd kill Hitler. And people, I hear a lot of people talk about that. If, oh, I go back in time, I'd kill Hitler. So he couldn't do all those bad things. You know, you know what I would do if I could go back in time, I would go befriend Hitler and, and I would convince him the importance of life and convince him that, you know, you don't need to go after a particular group of people just because you don't like them. I don't know if I'd succeed and maybe Hitler's a bad example, um, you know, but it's just... We, you, it's, I'm lazy. We all know I'm lazy. Okay. This isn't a trick to anybody. We don't think, but there's a difference between lazy and trying to do something because it's fun, because trying to figure out a, a separate path. I, I love the path not taken. I love when I go for hiking. I love when I see something on a computer. I love when I'm doing something. I like to do things not the normal way. Again, I know that's not everyone. I know that is uniquely me and a handful of other people. This isn't the masses. But I think it's fun to try to find that new blazing, that new trail. That I guess I have that pioneer species, that American pioneer species in me that I want to blaze a new trail. Sometimes, though, it would be nice to have someone else blaze that trail for me, at least one other person walk, because then I don't get hit in the head with all the briars. But if someone doesn't put that new trail, if someone doesn't think in that direction, if someone doesn't try to go down this path, if someone doesn't try to use the technology to benefit society, if someone doesn't try to break things, then that is how the bad people and that's how the evil wins. So just something to keep, just something to think about. I should probably get back. Let's get back to uh, getting everybody fed before. I get too philosophical on myself, carabiner.
I mean, you know, exactly. Exactly. Um, one of the things, you know, I want to mention this because I've heard this mentioned a handful of times and I see this in, I see this in a lot of the different communities that I belong in. So I belong into a very a large mix of communities. Some of the communities I'm in deal with, um, permaculture. Some of them deal with off gridding. I live, I, I, spend time in the Doomer communities. I spend time in a lot of communities. And one of the things that I see... Cool. One of the things that I see a lot in the communities is this, tr is this trick that it's doggy dog world. And dogs don't work like that. Like, I don't understand that concept. Dogs are pack animals and they'll fight but then they work together as a team because most animals understand that if something is unsurmountable, if it's harder for them to accomplish, then they work together as a team to make that thing. Now, maybe they don't work together as a team permanently, but they work together for it as a team long enough. And for some reason, we think things like the lone wolf is real. And a lone wolf is pretty much a wolf that's been shunned from its pack. Like being a lone wolf isn't something we should be striving for. It's something that we should look at and be like, oh, like why is that person a lone wolf? What did they break in society? Why do they need to form a new pack? Or are they the problem and not the pack? So, and it's just like another one of my favorites that society has completely tricked us on is this. You guys have probably all heard the phrase, um, You've 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 heard probably heard this phrase, you know, um, jack of all traits, master of none. But that was not the original statement. The original statement was jack of all traits, master of all. But again, they tricked us. They tricked us in that, and they make us believe that we shouldn't try to master everything that we do. We should master one thing, and 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 then not. We should master one thing and then not try to master other things. That's really what that statement is. Jack of all traits, master of none. That's an insult because it's good to be jack of all traits. I love the concept of jack of all traits. You should know a little bit about everything, but you should also master things. Like I'm a master gardener. I'm a master permaculturist. Okay. Those are things inside my realm of things that I master. So I cannot say that I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> right there, exactly, with the lone wolf statement. Um, that, is, that is exactly what normally happens because there's very few animals that actually live on their own. Are there some? Yeah, there's going to be outliers for every single thing that exists because that's what's important about the world we live in is that there's a lesson why does everything happen in nature? It's a lesson for us. It is a lesson for us to learn from. We should be looking. The Native Americans had so much, or any Aboriginal people, and that's, this is including things like the Vikings and the Celtics and all the Aboriginal people, all the people that are Native, all the people that were connected to their lands, wherever that is. They understood that nature teaches us lessons and we should be listening to the stories. You know, the importance of working together, that the lesson you learn from the bees and how bees, you know, working together, you can achieve great things. You know, bees are like the greatest story gift that we were ever given. It's showing that if you work together hard as a team with, you know, some individual sacrificing for the greater good, but as a team, you work together, the reward is sweetness. And the reward is a substance that will last forever because honey is indestructible, virtually indestructible. That's a lesson that because... Yeah, with what Mark just said. I mean, the, the thing is, is that we've... 
we're we're in a we're in a huge paradigm shift right now uh and it's hard it's hard to be a human in a paradigm shift and i say this because I went from living in the city, then I lived in the suburb, then I made the ultimate decision to just go be out of everything. I was a social butterfly. I had tons of friends I hung out with. I was doing something every night with a different friend. I was going out, I was doing this, I was going to clubs, I was doing all these fun things. And then when I moved to Southern West Virginia, I moved here with not knowing where the grocery store was. I didn't know a single person and I knew nothing about the culture down here. So those three things I knew nothing about. But I did it because it was fun. It's a challenge because I don't know about you, but I like the exploration of life. I like to try to challenge the stuff. I like to try to push things forward. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the status quo. Now, maybe you are, and that's cool. Like maybe you've got, you know, or if you've got a family, you don't have, you know, your adventuring days are limited because your family is your number one most important thing. So... I don't know where I was going with that. That was just another tangent over here. I'm good at tangents. You guys know that. I'm good at those. But yeah, this 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 AI technology, this this our cell phone revolution, all of this stuff. If it's not controlling you, and that's what you got to be careful with, it can control you guys. You know, if you're playing too many video games, I don't hate video games. I think video games are great ways to get groups of people together. They're great ways for father and son to bond over things that they just can't do in reality. You know, it's fun to go hunting together in a video game. That's something that's instinctual. If you, if you and your dad are playing, like, let's just say Fortnite, you and your dad or you and your uncle or you and your elder are playing Fortnite together, you're hunting, you're working as a team, you're doing something instinctual to what humans used to do. And you can't really do that in current society um, for lots of reasons. Maybe you're too busy. Maybe you don't live in a place like that. So it gives you that ability. But if you're addicted to it, and you're not using the tool properly, then this tool's using you. That's what you have to be careful. You have to make sure the tool's not using you. But I think of everything that exists, including the TV, even to the point, even though I'm not a big fan of the TV, I think everything is an important tool if utilized properly. If you know, if the tool's trying to indoctrinate you or your family and you know that, then you know when to turn it off. You know when to not utilize it. You know when to... Um, and, and that's, that's the part that I think a lot of the modern day Luddites try to put the thing is that they're too lazy to actually learn how to use the tool. And just make sure you're not one of those lazy people that you're not trying to just say, oh, I don't like this tool and for reason X, I don't want to use it. Just make sure that you're not that person, you know? If there's a, if there's a piece of device that you're just not comfortable with, maybe you don't understand it enough. Maybe you just you, th you see that it's affected your family because your family is being addicted to it. No problem with you taking that tool and you uh, limiting the use of that tool or even taking that tool out of your house. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it if it's, if it's harming you. But just don't hate a tool because you don't understand it. Try to learn what that tool does. Learn how to use that tool because if you, again, like I'm going to repeat again and you're going to hear me repeat this over and over again because this is probably the most important message that I can get out to you today, is that if you don't know how to use the tool, it will be used against you. If you don't know how to use a firearm, somebody will be able to use it against you, and you will see this pretty object. Look what happened to the Native Americans. Look what happened to other things. There was a tool that they they brought in, and people did not know what it was, and they didn't respect it. And like what Mark said there, right now is the perfect time to utilize this tool. It's brand new. No one really knows how to use it effectively. So you can get in there. You can use this tool. You can have your kids use this tool. And you can make sure they use it in the way that you think is appropriate. Because that's, again, appropriate use of tools. Okay, let's, uh, let's go check on Lisa. Let's make sure Lisa's good to go. All those guys are fed. All those guys are watered. So, also, if you disagree with me, I'd like to hear how you disagree with me because this is a good conversation. Because I, maybe I'm blinded to something. Maybe you can be like, yeah, Doc, but X, Y, Z is just the reason why some... 
someone can't use the can't use the tool. Quantum internet, dude. I being able to have every bit of knowledge at my fingertips is the most amazing thing. I, I can tell you as a kid and first getting on the internet in the 80s and using dial-up and the fact that I'm carrying around a pocket library of Alexandria with every answer to everything I've ever wanted to know right there. I, I, I mean, I'm just, the future is flipping amazing. I, I love this reality that I was gifted to. I think it is really cool. And I am so excited that um, I'm living here. Don't get me wrong. There's absolutely tons of things. There's tons of things that I miss about the past. What's up, Lisa? Hi. Okay. There's tons of things that I miss about, you know, growing up because I'm very nostalgic. It's good to be nostalgia and it's good to have you know, to, to be nostalgic about the past because that's when we're young and when we really had the, the innovation to push things forward. And it's good to know and to remember how things were so that we can take the good of what it used to be like when we were younger and we can make sure that our children and that future generations also get to experience. And just spread that good information out there. And tell them, you know what, when we were younger, it was cool to go outside and ride your bike. It was cool to go climb a tree. But there's also stuff like, there's also stuff about that time period where, you know, it was, e it was easier to be controlled because, you know, we did not have, you know, the social media. I couldn't get my message out as much. I didn't, I couldn't own a TV station at the time. I couldn't get, I couldn't tell you guys how to do some of the stuff I wanted because I wouldn't have been able to. We didn't have this, a camera, you know, I had a camcorder, but then I would have had to figure out a way to get my camcorder to be broadcasted so that a bunch of people watched it. And that would have cost a lot of money. You know, even if, and maybe I would have got on a, a small TV station at night. That still would have been hard to do because then I would have had to record it. I would have had to edit it. I would have had to get it out there. Then I had to pay for that kind of knowledge. I would have had to pay for the access to the cable channel or that whatever that was called at night i forget um but now i just gotta flip on my phone you just gotta flip on your phone and you can teach anyone anything any of your skills everything that's bouncing around in this head of yours you can just show somebody else i mean the other reason i suggest everybody should be doing this is because you're going to have relatives you're gonna have children you're gonna have grandchildren you're gonna have nieces, nephews, or you're going to just have cool kids that are going to look up to you. And being able to document that message to them and being able to say, when you get old and gray and you're tired and you just can't remember everything, you can be like, ah, oh, yeah, the little Johnny got this video. Just watch this video. Or I've got this, G, this, this, uh, this GPT that I programmed. Just ask the GPT this question. And I've asked this GPT every question under the sun. And it answers it very close to the way I would answer it. And it gives us power over the elite. Because you know the elite's going to do it. Like, the elite are going to use these tools. So by convincing us not to use them, that means their message gets out to the youth and our message doesn't. Those are important things to think about. So let's, uh, let's get here for a second. Oh yeah, dude, AOL and AIM and being able to, um, I, I was a huge fan of instant messaging. I love it. I, I really miss the fact that ICQ and AIM and even MS Messenger or Yahoo Messenger doesn't exist. It oh, wow. I've never thought about that. If AIM would have had streaming, wow. That would have been a game changer back in the 90s, early 2000s. Game changer. 
You know, the... well, I don't know if you guys ever use Trillium, but I used to use Trillium. That used... That's how you could link all of them together. And it was so cool being able to link all of them together. So if you had Messenger or ICQ or AIM or MSN or what was more of the obscure ones like Pagoo, you could even, you could even, um, later on, I mean, and, and, you know, Skype, I mean, I think Skype was one of the most amazing things that happened in my lifetime is, was really cool, but you know, again, but look where we're at today and just think, you know, 10, 15 years from now, the next the next technologies that we're going to have is going to even make the fact of we're going to look back and say, do you guys remember the good old days of, of live streaming? And we're going to be able to talk about that. We're going to back. You remember the days of Discord? And those were great days too, you know. Can you imagine if these would have had that technology? So, well, Skype uh, sold out to Microsoft. And it's being converted into Teams. Ooh, look at those cool clouds. Let's uh, let's peek up here. I just I just peeked over that way and saw some pretty cool clouds. I thought you guys might like to uh, look at those clouds forming over the mountains over there, so you guys can see right there. We'll zoom in a bit. Really nice, cool clouds forming right there along that ridge line. So to recap, we'll do a still a recap of uh, some of you have maybe you're just popping in. So a recap of what we talked about today is we talked about why you should be learning as much tech as you possibly can. Don't be afraid of the tech. You should be learning this tech because the more you know about the tech, the less that they can control you and the less that and the more the more ways that you can get your message out and not let the elite control you and yeah you can make some cool clouds with vape actually what's really cool you're talking about making clouds with vape you just throw something if it's kind of a little like especially here if it's just a, sm a smidget foggy or if the um if the uh, humidity is a little bit high it's really fun i can have a fire and if i burn the fire a particular way you can, uh, you can get it to make more clouds and you can get it to rain a little bit. The other cool thing up on the mountain, if it's really windy and really foggy, I can go into the pine forest and it's not raining outside, but inside the pine forest, it's raining because that's the cool thing about pine trees is pine trees are really good at filtering, at filtering the air and making it better. But back to technology. So the thing is, is your responsibility is to learn as much tech as possible. Don't be afraid of it. Don't let them trick you into thinking that it's part of the beast system because if you don't learn it, they're still going to put it in place. They're still going to make you use it. They're still going to force it. Learn how to use it. Learn the ins and outs of it. Learn how to utilize it to the best of your ability. You don't have to use it everywhere. You don't always have to use it. You just need to know how it works. So, and then figure out because your kids are going to use it. Your cousins, your nephews, the younger generation is going to use it. And if they come to you and ask for help and you can't answer that, then that means that they're going to go to the system. They're going to go to someone that isn't you and they're going to ask them how to use it. And that person might not have that little person's best interest in mind. So that is another reason. It's reason number two. So one is so you know how to use the lies of tools so they can't control you. Two is so they can't control your loved ones. Two best reasons to do. Third is it's the future, not going away. So you might be able to wait to generate you more wealth. And I don't know about you, but all of us can use more wealth. The more wealth that we have, and I'm not talking necessarily about being rich, I'm just talking about wealth. Wealth is money, knowledge, land, and other things. The more wealth you have, the, the less and less controllable you are. Because if you're in a pinch and you're you're being taken advantage of, or you're poor, or you are vulnerable, then bad people will find ways to take advantage of you because you're in a vulnerable state. So you know how to use technology to build you wealth and to build you knowledge, ways that you can thrive. So that's pretty much the main lessons of today's stream.
So if you like this kind of stuff and you don't just want to watch it on YouTube or you don't just want to watch it on DLive. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you guys can check me out on DLive. That's where I do all of my live shows. Some of my live shows don't show up on YouTube, but it's uh, DLive backslash X Dr. Firefly. Really, it's X Dr. Firefly just about everywhere. If you want to rewatch this on YouTube, it's X Dr. Firefly Mavis. Um, and Mavis is the name of my nonprofit that we do where we teach people how to actually farm and build these skills and all that kind of stuff. So that's, you know, those are, that's another tool that you can use. So if you like that kind of stuff, um, you want to know more, you want to connect with me, those are the best ways. You can join the Discord. You'll occasionally see the Discord link pop up. It should actually be in descriptions of just about everything. If it's not in the description of this YouTube video, come back a little bit later. And when I update the, when I update the, the, the description, it will be. And I'm just here. I want to help you guys. I, I want to make everything better. I want, to chew, I want us all to thrive. I want us all to succeed. So there you go. If you're a Discord user, and if you've never used Discord, come and check out. We'll be more than happy to help you use Discord. Great thing about Discord is it is a great way. You guys want to see Fernando because Fernando wants to see you guys. Right, Fernando? Yeah. Fernando wants to say hi to everyone. Yep. But if you've never used Discord before and you guys need to learn how to use it, that's great. Just join the Discord. We've got a uh, video chat, a voice chat, and some text chat. We can teach you. Um, it's not very hard, even if you're not tech savvy. We'll, make, we'll get you through it. We'll make sure it works. We'll make sure we can help you uh, connect with us and... All the cool stuff we share. We got a lot of cool people on there to share their farming techniques. We share some cool DIY ideas. We're really just a great community of trying to thrive to try to make sure that all of us can find ways to succeed because if we raise the water level everywhere, all boats get rose. I know I really butchered that quote. I kind of turned it into my own, but the idea is, is we just want all of us to succeed. I don't want anybody to fail. I want us all to succeed. All of us succeeding means that life is just better. So, and better life is, uh, is what I like. I'm here to serve. That's my purpose on earth is to make, is to serve humanity and to make life better for me and everybody else. So let's check on Lisa real fast. Need help with anything, Lisa? Yeah, everybody food and water. I got everybody food and water down there, yep. So, okay, let's head back. I've never heard my phone make those noises before. Interesting. So let's head back to the house because it's probably getting close to the time that uh, my glasses are about to say, Adios, because they have about an hour and a half. I'm going to do a review on these uh, Meta Glasses. Love them. <laughs> Very useful for a lot of things. So if you, you want to learn stuff like that, you want to learn about farming, and just, just want to learn more about me. I don't know why you wouldn't want to, but if you do, this is the place to be. So just trying to show you what's real, so you guys know. Come on, Fernando. So you guys uh, know, you know, you have the real experience. That's why I like live streaming. It's hard to hide things. There's no perfect edits. Getting the message out. So, there's the mountain. Sun's cresting the mountain. So that means it's about time for me to go in, get a couple more things done. Is, is, did they get the trash? They did. Um, all that stuff. So, so anyways, friends, since Fernando wants me to take him in and feed and Lisa's almost done with her chores, I'm going to head in. Again, guys, if you want to keep talking with us, um, join the Discord, hang out. We're usually always on there talking about everything saving the world or just debating every little thing. That's what we do. And if you're new, 
I try to do this about every day between this time. It's not every day because sometimes I'm lazy and feel like doing other things and don't always feel like carrying a phone around, but look forward to that. And I yeah, hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. And uh, everyone that uh, on Live that gave me lemons, thank you so much. Absolutely appreciate all of those. They help out. And in the very near future, guys, I will be, uh, be linking you guys to my classes. We're gonna, I'm going to start building classes, uh, mostly free classes, so that you guys can learn all the skills that I have. So you don't just have to watch boring YouTube videos, but you guys can jump in and learn the skills and such like that. And as soon as that gets up, I'll be chilling and talking about those. Anyways, friends, it's Doc. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. All right, Fernando. Fernando wants you to guys have a wonderful rest of the day too. No, he just wants to rub on that pole. He's like, I don't care about you guys. I just want to rub on this pole. Anyways, guys, stock. Have a wonderful day. See you guys later. Adios.